data engineering continues to grow uh, in terms of jobs. You can see this across multiple uh, surveys and studies. Uh, I'm going to put a few up here uh, from various people kind of showing that there is increasing demand for people with data engineering skill sets. But if you're like me and you just got out of college, you had no idea what the term data engineering was or what they do. Uh, if you look across all the videos, including my own, you'll see lots of technologies, you'll see lots of tools, you'll hear, hear words like data warehouse, data lake, ETL, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And maybe you get confused and think that's what data engineering is. And yes, those are the tools and methods that we use to do our job, but that's not the goal or core of what data engineering is about. So let's dive into understanding what is the goal of data engineering. One great definition is from Joe Reese and his book, Fundamentals of Data Engineering, where he describes it as the development, implementation, and maintenance of systems and processes that take data from a raw state and produce high quality, consistent uh, information that supports downstream use cases such as analysis and machine learning. Now, let me consolidate that even more and say the goal of data engineering is to take raw data sets and make them easy to work with for our stakeholders. Yes, there's other things like we wanna make sure that they're reliable, they're robust, um, and we can continue uh, to use them uh, moving forward by making them repeatable. But overall, the goal is to take data that is often very difficult to work with for various reasons. Um, sometimes it's because there's a lot of duplicate data. Sometimes it's because the data itself was hard to access or maybe just modeled in such a way that wasn't conducive to someone who is maybe either less technical or doesn't have the time to actually sit there and process it to actually use it very easily, as well as you know maybe filling in missing in values, missing business logic, whatever is, is missing, and making it easy to integrate across various uh, data sets and domains. Um, and that really is kind of the end goal. Everything else around it, whether it be streaming, ETLs, ELTs, um, data warehouses, data lakes, all of that is just tools and methods that we use to actually get to this and goal of making data accessible to everybody in the company, not just people who are technical. The way I think about it is usually that there are all of these uh, raw data sets that represent business uh, domains and departments and transactions that are occurring. And what we wanna do is create some sort of core data set. Oftentimes this is referred to as a source of truth uh, for the business, at least for the analytics standpoint. And that is the goal. Uh, I always say that it's, always a goal. Source of truth is a goal. It's rarely a full on destination because things always change. And really the source of truth are the applications themselves. But we're really trying to create a source of truth that the analytics teams uh, and data science teams can work with. And the problem is that data is not in that shape. Let's give a few examples uh, from my own career as well as just in general. Let's talk about integration or being able to join different data sets even when they don't really work well together. Well, if you let this happen organically uh, between, let's say, data scientists or data analysts, they might find some sort of key that they could join two data sets together. Maybe for one uh, data science team, they'll join two data sets together via address. In another data science team, they'll join via email or possibly uh, first last name combinations and trying to join them because they want to somehow connect customer data together that doesn't naturally connect. What can end up happening here is then you end up with very different results. And so the goal from a data engineering standpoint is to create data sets that are reproducible, that everyone can rely on, that don't have questions in terms of how you should join them, but instead there is some clear path forward in terms of how data sets that don't work well fit together. Another good example that uh, I usually give in terms of a bad uh, a case of this was when I had to kind of create some way to integrate data between two different systems that were managing project data. If you are at a large enterprise, there's often multiple project management systems. Uh, in this case, there was one that tracked hours and one that tracked higher level information like budget, um, spend, different kind of accounting information. And they wanted to attach hours specifically to uh, that line item, uh, like uh, employee time and contractor time in the other project management system and then serve those up in reports. Now the problem was one system had a clear ID of where this was. And now the problem was one system had a clear ID that was project ID and the other system used something that was called project number. The problem with project number was it was an open text field, meaning anyone could put anything they wanted. There was no drop down that would only limit you to the set of IDs. So we had a whole 
cluster of types of inputs. Some people did use project ID. Other people did things like project ID, comma, project ID, comma, project ID in a single field. And still others thought the field meant completely different things, like the amount of budget that the specific project had meaning we were very limited on how we could integrate and report across those systems. So as the data engineer, I had to go in and not only obviously add in the technical aspect of it and trying to join this data and create data sets that were connectable between two different systems, but also then going to teams and going to the PMO and talking to them and being like, hey, we need to work on how we input this data here uh, in order for us to do reporting later on. So we kind of sometimes even have to act as uh, some sort of arbiter between two teams to make sure that the communication is correct. So that way, when the data finally does get to the analysts, it is in a format that everyone can understand. There are still other issues that data engineers have to work on in order to make data more accessible for the end user. This includes remodeling the data. So we often do all this crazy reprocessing, like star schema models or snowflake models or whatever model you're picking uh, today. So we often do all this remodeling, whether it's something as simple as a star schema, where we create a fact table and all the dimensions around it, so that analysts and data scientists don't have to deal with the raw state of the model. Generally, most data models that come from an operational system are in some third normal form. You know, they're heavily normalized. This means that you're gonna have to do tons of joins to kind of get data um, into one single table. And that means you need to know how to do said joins. But a star schema approach or something similar is a much more simplified approach where there is a centralized fact table that often represents the core focus of what you're trying to do. And then everything around it dimensionally uh, is all about generally what you're slicing and dicing on. Maybe it's region location, or maybe it's something like stores and product type. Whatever it might be, this kind of makes it a little bit of a simpler uh, approach for analysts to work with. And even then, we might even go one step farther and create a plus type table. At least that's what I've called it in the past, where you just join all that information together uh, up front. So there's no confusion whatsoever in terms of how this data works together. And another point you'll often always hear is adding historical information and being able to track it. Not all systems track historical information correctly, especially when it comes to things like dimensional information like customers, maybe a customer moves, or if we're referring to employees, maybe they change job type, and you might lose that historical information over time. And thus data engineers will often put some layers in that will help you track uh, any of that historical information. But all of this, and again, whether it's in a data warehouse, a data lake house, whether it's being an ETL that runs the data or an ETL, all of this is focused on making the data easier to access. Now on top of this, data engineers do often do other things, including having to manage things like security, um, data management in general, orchestration, and all of these other tasks. But even all of this, the, the end goal is providing some sort of layer of data that an analyst can access. And yes, there's other things we take into consideration like security and, and now with you know GDPR, other forms of compliance and privacy. But the end goal of what we do is really trying to make data as accessible and trustworthy and reliable at companies as possible. Yes, there's a bunch of fancy tools and best practices you can sit on top of that data, but really that is what I would say is the quintessential goal. With that guys, I wanna say thanks so much for watching this video and I will see you next time. Thanks and goodbye.